Hi, everyone. It looks like everybody's starting to get in. And my name is Graham O'Neill. I'm one of the facilitators here. I have the pleasure of working for Campaign for Working Families in Philadelphia and also serving on the Taxpayer Opportunity Network Steering Committee. We're here today for the workshop, I'm in Virtual Reloaded. Uh, this workshop is designed to um, give where we is designed to give everyone an opportunity to see how three different organizations, VITA organizations across the country have uh, set up and made virtual VITA work in their community. Uh, just a few housekeeping items. So this webinar is going to be recorded. So please be aware that um, your comments and anything said is recorded and, and will be made available to all registrants at the end of the conference. All webinar mute attendees are muted upon entry to just to make sure that everybody can um, hear and pay as close attention as possible. Please, please, please make sure to ask a question or share your thoughts at any time by typing into the text box. Text box of your Zoom portal will be collecting questions uh, throughout the presentations and then during the Q&A session, asking the participants them. And please, if you experience any technical issues, email justin at jchu at prosperitynow.org. So for the workshop agenda. So we're gonna have the session introduction, which we just did. And then we're gonna hear from three of my colleagues from across the country. They are Takima Robinson from the Connecticut Association for Human Services, uh, Michaela Braithwaite from Grow Brooklyn and Im Cashin from the United Way of Greater Nashville. After that, we'll have a discussion and Q&A and then we will um, have breakout sessions. So as we heard, uh, again, I'm Graham O'Neill from Campaign for Working Families. Uh, Michaela Braithwaite, Takima Robinson and Im Cashin are all gonna be your presenters today and share their experience with virtual VITA. All right, with that, we will get started and I'm gonna turn it over to Takima Robinson from the Connecticut Association for Human Services. Well, thank you, Graham, and good afternoon, everyone. I am honored to be here. Um, I am so I'm excited to talk to you all about um, our experience with a virtual VITA. I wish it was in person, hopefully next year, okay? But um, so as Graham said, my name is Takima Robinson and I'm from the Connecticut Association for Human Services, also known as COS. My role there is Director of Asset Building Programs. COS manages um, one of the largest VITA coalitions in Connecticut. We have over 50 VITA sites in five different counties. In 2020, when the pandemic first hit, we had to move quickly in order to have the least disruption in our services. So we had a group of students from Yale who ran one of our VITA sites implement a version of virtual VITA. And that version was used in JOT forms. And although it was great at the time and it, it served its purpose, we were thankful for Get Your Refund. <laughs> <laughs> um, and even with Get Your Refund, there were some problems, but um, we were able to adjust. And so even though with that, we had, it was better than job forms, we still had a bit of confusion with um, our taxpayers and also our volunteers. So we um, implemented trainings in order to get people acclimated and adjust to the new system. And then we also, um, using the materials from Get Your Refund. And then we also made this YouTube video that I would like to share with you now. Hi, my name is Jenny Vongsai. I am the Volunteer Income Tax Assistance, also known as VITA, Program Coordinator for the Connecticut Association for Human Services. The VITA program offers free tax preparation to low to moderate income families and individuals. The VITA program oversees 60 sites across the state of Connecticut. And normally we have in-person and drop-offs appointments our sites, due to COVID, we are now doing things a little differently. We are offering in-person and drop-offs by appointment only. And then we have our online process through the getyourrefund.org forward slash cause dash CT available for online. 
Um, you can make your appointment at 211. Select option 3, then option 6 to make your appointment at any site. So using the online process through getyourrefund.org, you can use this by going to a web browser and entering getyourrefund.org or scan a code using a QR scanner. Once you are welcomed at the site, you will select get started, file taxes with help, and then continue. From there, the get your refund process will ask you about tax returns for the years that you will need to file, select options that will be pertaining to your tax situation. From there, you will enter your name in a zip code, and from there, they will list sites that are close to you. Then you will have the option to enter your preference for contact method, whether by email or text message, and then enter basic information. At the end, there is the client consent form. And then as you would at an in-person site, you will answer basic information to your household, such as income, expenses, health insurance, and if you prefer direct deposit. Then you will be gathering your documents to upload. Some of the documents will be your ID, your social, and then your tax documents. When uploading your documents, we ask you to take clear pictures, reference what document type it is, and at the end, confirm your submission, and then mention the time of your preferred phone call for the interview, select direct deposit if you prefer it, and then verify your mailing address. Before submission, you can mention anything else you would like the tax preparer to know about your tax situation, and then select Submit, and you will receive a confirmation number, as well as a text message and an email. And that is how you use the GetYourRefund.org online process. Thank you so much for joining us today. Again, if you need help with in-person and drop-offs by appointments, you can call 211, select option 3, then option 6. I just want to say thank you to um, the Get Your Refund folks um, for giving us the platform to do the to do the work but also the materials because that was materials that we gathered from um, their platform to do the video back to you Graham thank you Jakima we really appreciate you sharing with that it's great to see how um, any of us can take those materials that get your refund were able to provide us and make them uh, work in our community so thank you so much so next up, we're gonna have Nikila Braithwaite from Grow Brooklyn. And we are really excited to hear from her because as many of us know, um, Get Your Refund has been incredibly helpful um, and it's been open to many, many of us, but it hasn't been the option that everyone use and it's not an option that everyone can use. So we're interested to see and hear about how someone made um, it work who was using Get Your Refund also was able to use another different process for their virtual operation. Hi, everyone. I hope everyone's having a great day and a great conference. Thank you, Graham, for this opportunity. Um, I'd also like to shout out Darren Liddell. Thank you for including us on this. Um, Grow Brooklyn is a wonderful, wonderful organization. Um, I love working with this organization because of the services we provide to make sure that we can help people grow and protect their wealth. Uh, we have um, foreclosure prevention. We have uh, legal services. Uh, definitely end of life planning for folks to help to keep their assets in the family. And we have our great free tax prep program. And um, what's great about it is that everyone on this webinar has in some way contributed to our program. And how that has happened is that when we plan, we look to all of you experts to see what we can do. Um, so to that end, what we did when we were planning our virtual program 
this uh, last season. Oh, it was just tough because once we had to close, uh, we had to leave so many, so many filers in the lurch. And um, we didn't, people were just dropping by the locations quite angry. So we had to come up with solutions. Uh, so what we did was we came up with, we were using the scan document pilot um, to have to take care of some of our drop-offs. And that basically in tax layer, you can upload uh, files there and, um, and use those to share with your volunteers. We also did a lot of the FSA, which um, in the past, a lot of folks were not happy to do DIY. They didn't want to do it because they figured, hey, you're a tax preparer, prepare my taxes. Why should I do it? But <laughs> this time they were quite happy to do it. So we would walk them through. What we would do is make an appointment with them, explain to them what services we, were ha we had, and then we would um, get on the phone with them and help them prepare their taxes. I'll, I'll talk a bit about that a little later. And we also created our own tools to uh, to start using Virtual Vita because um, originally we hadn't been uh, approved for the Get Your Refund um, program because it, it took a little while. They were onboarding so many people and um, we had to get our clients served. So we wanted to create our own tools. And um, if you skip to the next slide, please. Okay, so this is a little um, of our convoluted process, but we understood it. But basically we did use some of the same softwares that um, Takima mentioned. She mentioned JotForm. And uh, what we did was we had to uh, make some tweaks to it to make it work for our folks. Uh, fresh desk ticketing, uh, we tried that. We also used Dropbox as our compository for all of the files. And of course it was very secure. Uh, of course, tax layer. And then, uh, and then we used Adobe Sign to get our documents signed. Um, we chose Adobe Sign specifically because of the security measures in place. Um, we are a part of the New York City Tax Coalition, and there are a lot of uh, PII rules in place for us. So we had to make sure we did uh, a lot of, we had to use a lot of approved softwares. And uh, one thing that's not on here is our video conferencing, which was Google Meet, and that was quite helpful. Um, yeah, so next slide, please. Talk a bit about this. Okay, so as I was mentioning, our virtual process, we have, uh, we, have we have our forms online. Um, the client will go to our acuity scheduling to book an appointment for virtual. And once they get there, it, it requires two appointments to get through virtual. We have the virtual intake where they would come in and we would do an interview with them over the phone. They submit all their documents, the drop off form, the uh, the intake form and they upload the documents and our our staff would go through each of these forms with them to make sure we have all the right information and make sure everything is a match. So for this, we did use three different tools. We did use JotForm and, also, and JotForm was able to give us access to all this information. Next, please. Okay, so this is uh, once they click the link in their uh, in their confirmation for the appointment, they would end up on our website to the form. Now, this is a facsimile. What would happen is they would go through each step. So this is the first page they encounter. It tells them a bit about why we're collecting the information and what we're planning to do. So they would click next and that would take them to the remainder of the questions for virtual. And that's basically letting them know that they are actually signing on for a virtual drop-off and that they understand that we will have access electronically to their to their um, information. So next slide, please. So once they've done that and they've gone through the um, gone through the drop off form, they will automatically be taken to the intake form. And the intake form is again another facsimile of the IRS form. Uh, we had to um, have this uh, this entire process approved by the IRS through using our, that form 15273, which was the virtual form. Uh, and, and they went through each software that we had told them we'd be using. So that way they knew that this was going to be a replicate, a, a replica of what they offer. Um, so that was, this, this um, particular slide addresses the uh, first intake, the first portion of the intake. And this is copied, this text is copied directly off the intake form. Next slide, please. 
Okay, so then once they click next, this would take them to the first few questions of the intake. I didn't um, do a little screenshot of each because that seemed to be a little tedious, but this to give you an idea of what it looked like. It doesn't look directly like the in intake form, but you know, all the questions are there. Okay, so then the next slide, please. And um, then they'd be able to upload their documents here. So everything went in a pro went in progress. So once they did the drop off, then they drop off form. Sorry, then they did the intake form, and then they get to upload documents. And if they if we required additional documents from them, we would send them another link, which would give them this information. Okay. Next next slide. Thank you. Okay. So this is what a typical. Uh, this is what we would see for the appointments. It shows um, the person's name, their schedule, their when their scheduled appointment is, what type of appointment it is. And um, then this is for our QR. So we made the QRs internal so that folks wouldn't be able to schedule their own QR. It just made it simpler for us because sometimes uh, if it takes a if it takes about three or four days to complete a return, we don't want people scheduling a uh, QR for you know the next day and then their return is not ready and they'll be upset. But we use the Google Meet interface because of uh, how secure our um, coalition found it to be. So that made sense. So that's just a, a screenshot of that. Okay, um, next slide, please. Okay, and then we had um, sign off tools for the for the tax form. Once we completed the tax return and we did the ver the video QR. There was an internal QR process, which um, our senior most person went through all of the um, returns to make sure everything was fine, and also added all of the signing points onto the return so that folks knew where to sign once they got their Adobe uh, their Adobe sign tax return. And that was uh, the entire process for that, which was really great. I mean, it was helpful because it, it was something that we were able to use to bridge time between using the get your refund interface and using our and, and being in person. Um, what was also um, something that came up for us was that our coalition wanted us to, uh, to use uh, video conferencing. So that's why we couldn't immediately start using the get your refund because it's all it's all using um, their phone system, which all of it is fabulous. It works very well because we do use that as well. But for anyone that's a New York based client, we were supposed to use our at least a video conferencing. So that was helpful. It was helpful to find all of these tools. Okay, let's see. Next. Okay, next. Okay, thank you. Uh, so our other option was to work with the IRS to get into the free file system because they do have a number of software packages at the time that were free for folks to use if they met certain income eligibility. And um, what we what, when the file list signs up for a DIY or a facilitated self assistance, they would see a message telling them that. Basically, these are the software packages we use. Uh, we have a Tax Slayer Remote, which is really good because that one um, helps. It, it's I found it was best to use a Tax Slayer Remote because it mirrored what our volunteers and what our staff sees when they're doing taxes for folks. So it's easier to give um, a one, you know, give them a blow by blow and and navigate the system. Tax Act was also great. Um, and as you see what the uh, uh, the income eligibility was, and also uh, Intuit TurboTax was pretty good, but they're, they're, um, they were a little low in terms of their income eligibility. So sometimes um, some of our clients couldn't use that. And then we also used OLT online taxes, which is at the time, OLT looked more like a tax return, so it wasn't as user-friendly. So we definitely encouraged people to use the one of the first two. Um, so those were the options we offered. And um, people were quite successful in doing their own taxes uh, through that option. And um, while we, we did have a few people that said, okay, fine, this is a little difficult for me, I would like to now use your virtual, your other virtual process. So we'd sign them up for that. But 
the DIY does work and it's great for filers who might be a little over whatever your income um, limitations are for your other services, or if they have cryptocurrency or things that your volunteers aren't necessarily as adept in, they are actually, the, the filer is actually the one in the driver's seat. So they can put in what they choose to put in and, and you just guide them through the process. And if, if they need to, if they need any information, you can help them with tax law by checking on your, um, on checking on the browser, checking in 4012, or whatever you need to do to go through with that filer. And that is pretty much the crux of our virtual program. So thank you for your time. Thank you very much for your time. That was an amazing amount of information. And it's amazing to see what you guys were all able to put together. Um, which I'm sure is what, like most of us have a very limited number of staff and operations. So it was great that you've given your community so many different options. And just to prepare you, there's been a lot of questions for you. So you better get ready for the Q&A. <laughs> Thank you. So next up, we're going to have Im Cashin from the Greater uh, United Way of Greater Nashville, uh, who's going to present uh, a little bit about their program, which, um, you know, is from a different part of the country. And we're really looking forward to hearing from her. Thanks, Graham, and uh, thank you, Prosperity Now, for this opportunity. Uh, my name is M. Cashin. I am one of two regional BIDA coordinators with United Way of Greater Nashville. Uh, some of you may know my colleague, Tamara Cree. Uh, I will say that I feel very fortunate that we had a two-person team to manage virtual BIDA because it was quite overwhelming and daunting, um, as a, and I'll talk about it more later. Um, I do want to give you a little bit of background about our VITA program. Uh, if you could go to the next slide, uh, it'll show how COVID impacted us as, and I'll also discuss how we implemented virtual tax preparation, uh, like so many other coalitions across the country did. Uh, I will say, I think uh, virtual VITA was a mixed blessing, uh, but we will probably continue to use it for the foreseeable future. And that's what uh, I'll be talking about later too. So United Way of Greater Nashville is part of the Nashville Alliance for Financial Independence, uh, which promotes financial stability programs in 30 counties in Middle Tennessee, all the way from the Kentucky border to the Alabama border. Uh, we traditionally have VITA sites in 11 of those counties. And as you can see from the table, you can see how COVID impacted us from 2019. Uh, while most of the numbers trend down, the only number that did increase for us was virtual returns. Um, in 2020, when most of our sites shut down, um, we were actually fortunate enough to connect with Takima and her group uh, cloned their job form with us. We used that for a couple of months until we got accepted into uh, the Get Your Refund program. And so we started with Get Your Refund probably around July 2020 and continued through October 15th. Uh, but that was a great introduction. And so in 2020, 2021, we did partner with them. And as you can see, the, uh, we did over 2000 uh, tax returns uh, using Get Your Refund. And that was about 37% of our um, total returns. Um, so, um, and then we had 54 virtual volunteers. So on the next slide, um, I'll share uh, what we did for our virtual operations. And let me preface this by saying that this is what we chose to do, not what we're recommending. Um, you know, we all kind of were thrown for a loop when COVID hit. And so we all try to make the best decisions for our own programs. Mm -hmm. And so um, I'll just cover some of the things we did. Uh, we did make the conscientious decision to not recruit first time volunteers for virtual volunteer, I mean, for virtual VITA. Um, exactly. You know, we did have eight sites that did open, they did take, um, and they used either drop off or traditional with some safety protocols and they did take first time volunteers. But for virtual, we didn't. And uh, that was for several reasons. Um, one was security. Uh, we weren't very comfortable with the idea of, of new volunteers who we were, who we did not know having access to personal taxpayer information. And since all our virtual volunteers were working from home, we couldn't monitor, <clears throat> excuse me, monitor the, um, uh, monitor them in that setting. Um, in addition, um, we also know how challenging um, VITA is for volunteers. You know, not only is it learning tax law, but you have to learn tax software. And we didn't want to put the third layer of virtual 
um, learn and get your refund on top of that for new volunteers. And at least with returning volunteers, we felt comfortable with them kind of having two out of the three things already uh, in their pockets. And in hindsight, I think that actually did save our sanity quite a bit by not having to have first time volunteers do this. Um, and uh, like one of the things we had with even returning volunteers, um, while they had might have already had the comfort with tax law and tax software, they also had challenges with technology, which could be many of them didn't had not used uh, monitors, and so we would have to assist them on um, on setting that up. And that was the other thing we did with our program is we did loan out laptops and monitors, and that was um, also again for security reasons. We prefer that they use our equipment in case, um, you know, there was some accidental download of personal information and we just felt comfortable if they were using ours in case that happens. Uh, we did make some exceptions, uh, but usually that was for volunteers who we had known for, uh, for a while. And then uh, for anyone who did loan out, we did have them sign a property loan agreement and that did, um, include um, a lot of the security protocols in the Pub 4299, such as uh, using a secured wireless network. Um, and then, uh, as I mentioned, you know, we wanted to get the volunteers up to speed on get your refund. And so to kind of help them, and, and thankfully we had some experience from the prior year, we did have uh, weekly virtual meetings uh, to talk about the processes. You know, there's a lot of confusions about who does intake and, you know, do we call the clients? So we worked out those, you know, any technical questions, but get your refund and the hub. And then also just to reinforce security protocols. And so we did that for about five or six weeks at the beginning until everyone felt comfortable. And then uh, we did also use Slack to communicate. Uh, we did set up several channels. Uh, we had one for roll call because we didn't have the volunteers sign up for shifts. We just asked them to, when they were available, come on site and say, you know, hey, I'm ready. I can take two tickets. Or, or if we hadn't had anybody sign on, we could say, we have five tickets available. Who's ready? Who, you know, who could take one? And so a roll call was um, our main channel for communicating. Um, and then, um, uh, oh, I would, did want to mention about monitors. I know a lot of um, vital groups have small budgets and you, and if you think that you don't have the money to uh, go out and buy new monitors, you might want to check with um, companies in your area that might recycle electronic equipment. In Nashville, there are two um, nonprofits that actually do that type of work, and uh, you can and we could get uh, lap, I mean monitors for like five to ten dollars each. So there are some options for um, for groups out there. Um, <clears throat> so and then. Once we got the volunteers up and running, you know, we realized that a lot of our clients had difficulty using Get Your Refund. Um, you know, a lot of them just weren't used to technology or, or didn't even have access to technology. Uh, so, you know, we did have instructional videos and flyers similar to um, to Kima's group, uh, and we did it in English and Spanish. Uh, we also held Zoom webinars with live demonstrations with libraries, banks, partner agencies. And then the third step we took to help clients is that we did open intake only sites. And that was great for people who didn't have access to the technology or just didn't feel comfortable doing it on their own. And then of course, once all that equipment went out, they had to come back in and as part of security protocol, we just had to make sure and clean up all the equipment and make sure there was nothing on there. Uh, Graham, can you go to the next slide? <laughs> So we're gonna take uh, most of what we learned from this year, apply it to next year with a few tweaks. And uh, this will probably get be adjusted as we continue to learn more during Vitacon. Um, so we did decide that we are, uh, we will accept first line virtual volunteers uh, for next season, uh, but we'd, we'd like to establish a prep only site for a way for them to get their um, bearings, you know, be able to ask questions and then for us to get to know them as well. And then, um, and then again, since we realized the intake sites were very helpful, uh, we do plan to expand those, the number of those, and then some of our traditional only sites will become hybrid sites. 
And then uh, we'd also like to work with some community partners to become navigators. And I've heard during Vitacon, uh, other partner or other coalitions have done this this year with success. And so we're gonna try to take that into our communities. As I mentioned, we cover 30 counties. So it'd be great if we could um, target partners that are in locations that don't currently have a VITA location. And then one thing we didn't do um, this year that uh, we'd like to do next year is to recruit volunteers to be assisters. Um, you know, I've heard from lots of different coalitions, intake is a huge issue. There's a bit of a bottleneck of helping clients work through the intakes. Um, and so by hopefully recruiting volunteers specifically for assisters, they can help people with the technology aspects of just taking photos of their documents and uploading. And then also helping them gather their information, you know, like, oh, I lost my social security card. We can give them advice on how to get a replacement. So um, those are just some of the things we're gonna do. And as I said, this Vitacon has been so valuable to learn from other partners and what they've done. And uh, we're so appreciative of um, Prosperity Now for giving us this opportunity to come together and learn from each other. Thank you. Thank you so much. That was really great to hear. And thank you for walking us through the evolution of your program and uh, also talking about how you're going to be apply those lessons learned. That's really helpful for us that are all, you know, because it's October, almost October, starting to think about next year already, um, even though it feels like it just became 2021, at least to me. Um, so great. Now we are um, going to move into the Q&A session and we have an, a lot of good questions. So let me pull them up here. I've been uh, furiously trying to copy them down. So the first one uh, that came in was, how can you local United Way organizations use the Get Your Refund platform? And um, whereas that's not something I think, um, I think all of us here can answer that it is a uh, is an open application process, but I know our folks, some of who are on the um, webinar right now, our friends at uh, Code for America can answer that. I'm putting some information about the next info session, which is October 15th and a link for folks to join. All right. So the next question is, um, this one is for, uh, uh, is for, for the first speaker. Oh, okay, that's, that's um, Takima. Uh, after taxpayers loaded info in to get your refund, what process do you use for the intake interview? For volunteers working on preparation for contacting the taxpayer for QR and signature. So. I guess the, the first question there is after taxpayers loaded information and to get your refund, what process did you use for the intake interview? Hello, so we use the process in Get Your Refund. So they were able to um, call through Get Your Refund. They would send an email or a text, depending on what the um, taxpayer preferred, either a text or a um, phone call. And then they would say, we, I will call, I'm going to call you to discuss your refund at this time. And then for some who preferred um, to do video, we did have Zooms. Great, so the next question is, um, this is for uh, Michaela. Did taxpayers participate in Google Meet to view returns? Did you have many who weren't able to do video calls? Yes, the taxpayers did um, participate um, with that. The ones who were not able to participate, we were able to send them to one of our pickup locations, but the ones who could participate, which a lot preferred, um, yes, they were able to see, we were able to share the screen with them once we verified everything with them again. You know, it's about making sure the person is sitting in front of you is that person. And then we were able to uh, share screens with them and go over the entire return with them. Great, and then the next question is, how long did it take to put together these processes? Was tax year 2020 the first year you used virtual? Uh, we used, oh, is that for, sorry, for me, for Grow Brooklyn, we used that for <laughs> tax year 2019, only after we uh, had to close sites. But tax year 2020 was when we, we, we learned a lot of lessons from what we did in the previous year. And uh, we were able to bring in some new processes, such as getting rid of the ticketing system 
and just having more um, staff and volunteer input into assigning the tax returns to the various uh, volunteers and staffers. And this question is actually from me and it's for you, Makila, is how, what kind of costs were there for putting together um, these own processes and for, this very, for your own uh, kind of homebrew virtual process? Um, for us, it was about $5,000. And um, I don't say that lightly. It's just that we did, um, once we had to close a lot of locations, we had to go and look for additional funding. So our, uh, the city, our tax prep coalition from the city, they were quite generous with us as well as to um, as well as um, the Robin Hood Foundation because they um, all of the coalition members really uh, were struggling and we had um, so many clients that just felt so displaced. I, I, it really I'm sure every Vita program, every person from a Vita program understands how tough it was during the first part of the of the pandemic when we really had to turn people away. But um, our partners, our sorry, our funders wanted to make sure that that didn't happen. So they gave us additional money and we had to create a lot of budgets. There was a lot of approval processes to get this done. So um, but there are ways to get around this and to share resources from with other um, VITA sites as well. Yeah, I would echo that. We here at Campaign, we had um, a lot more success than we usually did accessing uh, funds to get uh, new technology. And I'd recommend for anyone who um, is looking to purchase new technologies, talking to your local state representatives. A lot of, I know we had a lot of success working with our state representatives who were able to help us access uh, money that the states had for COVID relief funding that um, was on the books. And this is not just last year, we, we've been able to actually work with some of them to find unused uh, bits of COVID relief money to help us beef up our virtual platform. So then the next question is, one thing, I, and this is again for you, uh, Makila, is one thing I noticed about GYR is many of the fields on the 13614 are not answered by a client. Uh, since it is so prevalent, I wonder if not all questions are asked by GYR. I guess this one's more kind of for the group. Um, I think um, what we did, I, I can speak for what campaign did, um, for questions that didn't come through on the 13614 that you see in front of you uh, when you're looking through the hub, that's get your refunds, um, uh, client management system, we would have a phone call. And that's what that first phone call was really for, is to flush out the 13614 to make sure we were doing all the due diligence we needed to, and that we had a complete um, a complete 13614 on file. So the next question uh, is again for Grow Brooklyn. For many of the platforms you use, can templates be shared out? Would be great for smaller programs if they could copy templates? Yes, I, I definitely think that we should share resources. Um, you can definitely send me an email um, I, and I'll and just direct whatever questions you may have to me and I can um, put everything together for you. The next question is, um, how did you cover the taxpayer bill of rights and other posters that have to hang on and be displayed at a site when you were doing virtual? Okay, so for Grow Brooklyn, what we did was when we were doing the, uh, when we did the virtual, Q the video QR, we would have that hanging on our walls. We would also put it into the Jamboard of Google Meet so that folks knew that that was there. The only, the only thing I would say is that, you know, it's not it's definitely always visible to the client because it's just a poster on the wall. You know, we don't bring our cameras closer, but we also give them a copy of that when they get their appointments. So there's an appointment confirmation and that's where they'll get it. Great, and this next question um, came in for you, but I think I can help answer it too, is did your organization receive credit for referring taxpayers to the DIY, op DIY options? And I know we had campaign, we uh, definitely did um, working through um, both tax layer and my free taxes. Uh, there's definitely mechanisms in there that when you refer people to those, um, to the, either one of those sites, you're given a special link that uh, counts as credit for when uh, the person uses the DIY option. And the other thing too, is once you're using the DIY option, if you use any of those, uh, well, we used 
want, we used four packages, but if you use any of those packages, you talk with your relationship manager and get a, an SIDN for each one. So when folks click on those links, it's automatically populate, your um, SIDN is automatically populated. So when you get an SIDN report from your relationship manager, those um, links, those SIDNs with the name of whatever software package you're using or whatever you've called it will show up with the number of people who actually used it. Now you get people who have used the software on their own where they said, okay, fine, I don't need you. And they won't make an appointment. They just click on it and go with it, which is fine. So, and then you also get those folks who need the assistance. And um, at when we first started doing the DIY, um, a lot of people that saw our that we were doing it, they just wanted the the FSA for uh, tax layer. And so we didn't always know who had um, who had used the DIY option, but seeing the SIDN report from the IRS was really helpful. So we could see how many, um, what, how many people actually wanted to do taxes on their own. Um, in the past, people did taxes on their own. You know, they went to the post office and got a booklet and filled it out, you know, and, but now it seems like people are more, uh, they would prefer the use of some help. So it was curious to see how many people would take the plunge and do it on their own. Thanks so much. So this uh, next question is for uh, M at Greater um, uh, United Way of Greater Nashville, and they're asking. So it sounds like Jot forms can be cloned. Uh, yes, um, um, I found out Takima's group was um, using doing virtual Vida. She connected me with one of her um, Uber volunteers, Pat Gentile, who cloned the system for us. Um, and if you're in Jot form, there's like a clone button that you can use to just clone the system. And then we just kind of, um, um, kind of man, you know, I think we made a few modifications just for our site. So it's basically copying. Great. And uh, this question is again for you, uh, but I think anybody on our panel can answer it, but uh, why did you need monitors? Uh, yeah, I, I meant to say why we did it, but um, for virtual, you know, we had get your refund on one screen and tax layer on the other. So it was easy to be able to look at the documents that clients uh, sent to us on get your refund and then while entering it in tax layer. I could do split screens, but, you know, the screen's a lot smaller. And um, I think our volunteers really appreciated having a separate monitor to view documents. Yeah, and, and I would echo that. We, um, we got uh, extra monitors for our volunteers, but because they're volunteers, we couldn't necessarily force them to take it. So we had some that used it, some that didn't. And we kind of did an informal look at just everybody's production. And those volunteers that um, had a dual monitor at home were producing almost twice as many tax returns as those other volunteers. So um, it's definitely something that, you know, might not seem like the, the thing you want to spend your, your money on, but it's 100%, I believe, worth it. Yeah, we were fortunate enough to get um, tablets for our volunteers that we loaned out. So they, they like that. Yeah, you know, just to, if everybody's worried about the cost, we were able to find uh, their portable second monitors on, uh, on Amazon uh, for about $75. I think even less when we were able to find them when they were secondhand and they worked, they worked perfectly. They didn't need to be super fancy, just enough to get the job done. And, and it was not that cost prohibitive. And I think we have uh, one more question here, um, and this is for everybody. Maybe we can all take a crack at answering it, but how did everyone staff the virtual platform? And I'll start. Um, so I know we use Slack a lot. Uh, that's something that really made it all possible for us to um, staff the virtual platform. So it helped us communicate. It's how we assigned out tax returns. It's how our volunteers working at home ask questions. And I don't think we really would have been able do it. And I don't think you necessarily need to use Slack, but any kind of uh, chat platform that has um, that is really designed for people working remotely to work together was really important. Um, and in terms of where we found our staff, um, the pre most of our virtual volunteers were actually college students. So we we typically have a very large share of our volunteer base, our college students from any of the local universities in Philadelphia. But we found that um, the college students were the ones that were interested in the most comfortable with staffing their virtual platform, or staffing our virtual platform. Um, Akila, how did you staff it? <clears throat> we used, well, we, we got introduced to Slack through uh, 
get your refund. And we were grateful to use that process, but uh, we couldn't afford it after a while because we did spend a lot of uh, money on our other resources. So we used a combination of WhatsApp because it's end-to-end -end encryption. And we also used uh, um, Google Chats because our, um, at Grove Brooklyn, our um, system is built through uh, Google Workshop. So it was easy for us to use the chat function. And I see someone here already answered it, but um, you can get a uh, free or at least discounted um, Slack membership for nonprofits. I see another question in here, and I think we have just a couple more minutes. Um, Justin, you can let me know if we don't. Um, how did you encourage your college students to volunteer? And I think we had many that did it out of the goodness of their own heart, but credit, college credits uh, for their exactly. internship courses was um, honestly how we, we not only encourage them to volunteer, but you know, if, if we're being real with each other, keep them volunteering and showing up for their shifts, uh, mm -hmm. making sure that there was not only a, um, a credit involved, but also a professor that we could talk to about any issues we were having really um, was a key, key thing there. Same with us. We have a great relationship with the colleges here, several of the um, community colleges. And then of course, um, Yale University is one of our biggest, um, we have our biggest um, influx of volunteers from them. Sure, and I see a question that came in about, uh, can you talk about phones using, talk about phones over the internet um, and how that worked. I think uh, many of us here obviously use Get Your Refund, which had a, a somewhat built-in call feature that actually used um, your own phone uh, that was kind of uh, routed through the, the platform. But for folks that didn't wanna even get involved using their own phone, we set them up with uh, Google numbers. Um, and that really we found worked for us. Though we found that most of our volunteers were okay using their phone because the system that Get Your Refund had in place blocked their number, which as someone mentioned, um, also caused some issues, but we were able to navigate around it. So I think that wrapped up all the questions that we have. Um, so I think now we're going to move in. Sorry. To our, um, oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. Ma'am, there was a question that I wanted to address. Um, someone asked about the cryptocurrency and FSA clients. Uh, basically, if they had that kind of thing that was out of scope, we did just give them the link and they could actually use the program themselves. We were, uh, with our spec manager, we were told that we could use up to a certain amount and that once we are not coaching them, it was okay for us to give them the links for some of the other free files other than the tax layer. Just to answer that one question that was there. Great, thank you for calling that out. I, uh, I missed that one, so thanks. So I think next up on the agenda, we're gonna transition to the breakout rooms. And I know Justin's um, gonna move us all into them, but if you haven't been in one of the breakout rooms, we're all gonna be split up into groups. We're uh, gonna have a just couple of questions that we can talk about. Um, and, oh, here we go. There's the, the slide. So we'll be randomly assigned to the breakout rooms. There's going to be the three discussion questions on the board. And then after we uh, get a chance to talk about them, we'll all come back and be able to do a share out from each group or for as many groups as we have time for. So thanks, everyone. And we'll see you in the breakout rooms. All right. Uh, I think that's our time for now. Um, but before we close, I know there's some important stuff. First uh, is our feedback survey. Um, we sent this out in our last session, um, but if you, get, if you weren't in our last session or didn't, can't, didn't get a chance to fill it out, uh, please do fill out the survey monkey uh, there. Just click on it and put it in a separate tab. It really helps us figure out what we want to do for the next Vitacon, what we did well, and what we can, uh, other topics and things like that that may, you know, be useful in between Vitacons, right? It's always great for us to get together, but we want to make sure that there's stuff filled in in between. Uh, and now for the the bit I know we're all waiting for, which is bingo. Uh, if you haven't gotten your bingo card, uh, I'm putting in the link here. This is uh, putting in the chat here, the link for a fresh bingo card. So this is one that you would need to make a fresh bingo card. But in terms of our new bingo words, uh, the bingo words are, Form 8879, Tax Slayer Client Portal, and Ton Working Group. So again, that's Form 8879, 
the Tax Slayer Client Portal, and Ton Working Group. I'm going to copy and paste again the whole list of words that we've had for every single session. Um, if you haven't, uh, if you haven't won, there's still plenty of time. We have one more session, so uh, please do join us for the closing ceremony. We'll have three more bingo words there. Um, but again, thank you, Graham, Takima, Makila, uh, and M for this great session. Thank you everyone for sharing your thoughts and look forward to seeing you uh, at the next session. Have a great day. Bye.